Hello everybody, it is Idaho Ambassador yet again, and I am here with one of my favorite people in Boise, Brad, from Barbecue for Life, and shout out to Argos Productions, who is doing our audio and visual, and then also Lost Grove letting us shoot here again. We love them, and shout out to Jake, thanks for being an awesome family member and cousin. Uh, shout out to the Sushi, sushi oh, Shack. Yes, literally shout out to Sushi, sushi Shack. shack. It was awesome. uh, we just had sushi before we started, and I mean, that was insane. Like, really, really props good. Props, bros. That is, they're in a food truck. If you ever need them for catering or anything like that, give them a shout because it was, we were, both, we we're both impressed and we're food people. To see that kind of quality come out of the truck was pretty awesome. Which was, yeah, it was impressive. And it, it's close to my heart. It's close to our heart because we're food trucking people. <laughs> Which segue into, Brad, if you will, give us like a little bit of rundown of who you are, where you're from, what's your story, barbecue Oof. life. The story is long, how far back I got. I got water. We'll Oof. just go recent history. Yeah. Um, I am one of those wicked from California folks. <laughs> About the kind we like. Yeah, well, so we moved out. So, all right, we'll take it back a little bit. Uh, 2012, we lived in Southern California, Palm Springs area. I'm from Indio originally. Really hot, fucking bullshit. Um, are we, I'm sorry. Are we no, you can. Okay. Feel uh, free to speak openly. Okay, I still don't understand or forgive my parents for raising me there because it's so. Indio is kind hot. of a shithole. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not kind of a shithole. It's a shithole. <laughs> yeah. there, it's much different now than it used to be, but whatever. Yeah. I st it's still my home that I never want to visit. <laughs> um, and at the time, our kids were very young, two and four. Yes. Um, we had just bought a new house. I worked for a pretty big manufacturing company, and Bree managed a pretty big uh, sports bar. So we were doing everything right, you know, um, except I was gone doing between working, you know, 12, 14 hour days for the company I worked for and doing competition barbecue. I was basically never home. Yeah. And when I was, Bree was closing the bar that she managed. So we literally never saw each other. And I then came to realize that I had bought a house. We had bought a house in the same school district that I grew up in. Oh. And I was like, once I realized that, things really started to change in my mind. And then I also, with traveling for competition barbecue and work, going to places like Oregon and, and Idaho and like finding out like, oh shit, yeah. the whole world is not Southern California. There's like a quality of life that yeah. exists other places. Because I grew up thinking that that was all very normal, acceptable levels of violence, not giving a shit about anybody else, like all of that was just normal. And then I lived in Phoenix and it's the same shit there. And then I lived in Dallas and at the time it was pretty much the same shit there. So for me, it's like I picked all the wrong places to go. And I thought that that was normal life. Um, so we were on vacation in September 2012 in Oregon. And I think we were at Shahaley Falls. And I just looked at Bree and I was like, let's not fucking go home. Yeah. Let's, let's literally not go. I don't give a fuck about anything else. We can just start over here. I find a job. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. And so on the drive back home, because of course she made me go back home, <laughs> I spent the whole time thinking of a plan, and I came up with a plan. And by March 2013, we were here in Boise, and I had built our kitchen, our mobile kitchen, our cooker, and mounted it on my truck and all of that. So by April, by like I think it was April 1st of 2013 we were selling food and so you you guys you being barbecue for life originated in a like in a mobile unit trailer trailer right and then also with uh you know your what are they called smoker smoker yes smoker trailer in tow and then that's how you guys started and it was you and brie running it it was me and my sister originally, okay. and brie uh was taking care of the kids and and then she would cycle in so that me and my sister could have days off yeah. Um, about a year into it, my sister just, uh, a lot of people go into a small business. <laughs> think it'll be easy. And they think like, oh yeah, within a couple of months we'll be making money. Shit'll be golden. <laughs> <laughs> so we both know that that's not true. When, 
you know, if you're not fully prepared for the savagery that actually is going to happen, it's a lot easier to quit. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier to quit and just go, I'm out. Yeah. That's basically what happened to my sister. She, she wasn't that happy out here. Um, she definitely wasn't happy with just the absolute grind yeah. of open to close every day. No, no breaks, no days off. And no it's even money. more intense in a in a truck. God. It's like the winter is really fucking cold in a trailer, and the summer is really fucking hot in a trailer. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. And we're not yes. talking about a nice trailer. It was a 1973 travel trailer that somebody had made into a fish and chips trailer. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even like I couldn't even stand up in the thing. Yeah, you were helpful. So I literally <laughs> down to the frame rebuilt the whole thing with two by four walls, actual two by four walls, put a hood on it, put all the sinks, put the oven range in it, like actually made it into a kitchen. So it worked, but it wasn't like super nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know all about that life. Yeah. Everyone's like, why isn't your truck prettier? I'm like, do you know what a wrap costs? Yeah, you want to get your checkbook out? Yeah, because I ain't paying, what, six grand to wrap my truck. I'm sorry. No, nah, and I mean... If you for, want me to jack up the price of my food. Yeah, for everybody that can do that and start out that way, yeah. that's great. But I think we also benefit from starting with nothing. Like, by the time we started selling food, I had no choice. We didn't have any money left. Yeah. You know, so it was either go find a job or get out there and start selling food. I mean, when I landed here, as far as I knew, my trailer was ready to roll. When I went to get it um, checked out by the county, then all of a sudden I needed another sink and I needed to oh, change God. this and that. So that's what cost the last bit of money that we had and pushed me out even farther from being able to open. I had never even been to Boise. So like, yeah. I, we literally, we knew about four people and just started selling food. <laughs> Where did you start? Where was the first place you popped the up? The very first spot was on um, Cole, and uh, it's right under the overpass there, just past Emerald and stuff going this way, oh, where the yeah. sheriff's, sheriff's spot is. Yeah, there. yeah. There's like, like the, a little like building. Like the jail or whatever, yeah. yeah. There's like a little building right there. That was the very first, and at the time it was like a flea market. Yeah, now I think it's like a furniture store. Or yeah, something. I'm not even sure. I guess it was a venue back in the day. Oh, it used to be a roller rink. That, it was a yes. skating rink, yeah. But like they had like, good, like somebody was telling me they saw um, all kinds of really good bands at that place. That's bizarre. Oh, uh, what was the name of the band? Anyways. So that um, was your first spot. So that was our spot. first spot. It was not a great spot, but it worked. We were selling food like almost immediately. And then... Well, I mean, you're next to... the the cop station yeah i mean yeah so and it i don't know it just struck me even though that's not the best corner in the world or in boise um the subtle differences between california and here like closing up at nine o'clock at night and like teenage girls walking down not the street. being stressed about whether or not you're about to get jumped yeah. for your till. yeah 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 just like why are those girls walking down the street at nine o'clock at night like what the hell is going on and i start looking for like oh are yeah. they hookers or <laughs> yeah is, you're like it's like some sort of deal about to go down and no they're just normal people just walking they're down swapping. the street and i was like so blown away like fuck i made it you know <laughs> and for me knowing that i'm raising my kids in a place where violence isn't just like a thing that happens. Normal. I already feel like we won. Yeah. You know, we already won. So, yeah. Um, and then, so the next spot we went to was uh, Columbus and Overland, where... Um, it's where the... Um, it, I know that's true. It was a little vet, a uh, little like... Uh, it used to be a produce... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they yeah. just closed it. Now it's for yeah. lease or something. Yeah. yeah. And it was a 7-Eleven back in the day. Yeah, the it was, it's been all kinds of stuff. So we were there for... Till like October? Yeah, because October is when we opened at the roadway. So we were there till October of 2013. And then we got somebody offered us to take over the kitchen in the roadway. Where, which one was that? The roadway in is by St. Al's on Curtis. It was a, yes. it was a very rundown old what's it, Joe Sunshine Lounge. Yes. Right next door. Yeah. So we took that over, and that was nice because we were now indoors. And we have space, so like our menu can 
change. And so you can actually offer some different things and you have a little bit more room to... Yes. Because I I mean, I've been in that trailer and it's, it's not very big. I don't know how you fit in there. I made it tall enough that I can stand Side there. note, when we very first started and needed a legitimate kitchen, these guys actually offered to let us use that truck. Which Little did you know it was just a cruel joke because that trailer is cruel. No, but we, he, he gave us all the hope in the world. Like, literally, I was like, where the am I going to find a kitchen? How am I going to build this? What am I going to do? And they, like, were, like, so wonderful. And I was just like, oh, you guys are so nice. Like, you're the most wonderful people ever. But We try very, very, very hard. Like, we moved out here because people are better um, cult culturally. You yeah. Know? And that's not about race. It's that's just that's just the way it is. Like the culture is just better. People give a shit about people they don't know. And in in Cali, it's just not really like that. It's just and like, I was the same. Whatever. I mean, that's how it was. That's my fault too. But not really because like if I saw somebody pulled over or somebody get in an accident, I always stop. E yeah. Even in Cali. And here it's normal. Like everybody is helpful. So. I don't know what, uh, where I started on that, but. but no, I mean it makes sense because oh, yeah. oh, you, yeah. I mean, your instant reaction was, "We got one. Yeah. <laughs> We're not using it." And I was we, like, "We actually let." There was a, I don't know. There was that fire uh, on Franklin, an old building over there, and uh, one of the restaurants that was affected by that, a Colombian place. We let them use the trailer on a bunch of different occasions to, yeah, so that they could get out and make business. But if you've got something and you can be helpful, then. Be yeah, well, and that's, I think that's part of, like, the Idaho code, yeah. right? It's like... It should be. You, if it's not, it should be. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you just help your neighbor in whatever capacity they need to be helped. Yep. If you if you can do them that favor, then do that yep. favor. Versus, like, what you're saying is, I've been in SoCal quite a bit, and yeah. it is not the same the same way. No. And now, okay, so first you were, then you were in Roadway. Yeah, then we were in the then Roadway. Then where did you... And then we found out... I want to say we were there for basically a year because October of 2014 is when we opened at the spot we're at now. Yeah. So two weeks before a year was up, we found out that they sold the roadway. Oh, they, they basically were like, hey, we sold the building. You have two weeks Bye, to, to like, get out. Peace out. Yeah. So then we had to find, we got lucky and found the spot on Vista. Yeah. And we're super happy there. Which is in the Vista Village yep, if Vista you need. Village. They're vegan and they do barbecue and yep. his barbecue is insane. Yes. Not just a vegan place. Yes. Not, <laughs> trust me, my dad does not eat vegan. He loves <laughs> this place. Everybody, we did, I did the sign wrong. So if you drove by, you assumed that it was just a vegan. Vegan barbecue yeah. instead of barbecue mm -hmm. and vegan. Or, it added to the mystique. Hey, I like it. It's like, if you know, then you know. It's yeah, one yeah. of those kind of things. Yeah. And you've been in, so you were in there in 14, so you've been there almost four years? Yeah. Holy shit. It's crazy. And how is it? Slam. You guys are always busy. Yeah. I don't, I, I keep expecting us, like our percentage of growth to plateau. Yeah. Um, well, granted, we're only in our fourth year well, but, but it's still the not, city keeps the rate yeah. the city keeps growing well i was well, i was talking about this the other day with somebody i think we're in a we're in sort of a special time in boise where the amount of people is growing much faster than the amount of places to eat yeah so when it comes to a friday saturday fucking everybody's busy yeah everybody's busy everybody's busy. so like if over the next couple of years, while they start building more and more stuff, it's going to be nice. And you could be lazy if you want and and probably still do all right. Yeah. But but at the end of that... Or you could grow your market share right now. Exactly. And then they're going to be loyalty yeah. in the end. Yep. Yeah. Whereas in another five, six, seven years, when more places are open and there's options, if you're not on point, then you're going to suffer yeah, at, exactly. that, at that time. Well, and so. if you also haven't built your own community, right? Yeah. Like, and you guys are really good about that. Like, when all the stuff happened down south, you guys went down there and did a bunch of fundraising, which I think yep. is super cool. But that, again, goes back to the code of, if I can help you out, I'm going to come yeah. help you out. Yeah, and that was nice. We had just hit a point where, like, I wasn't on the schedule every day. Yeah. For the first time which I'm still not paying myself, but I'm not on the schedule. Hey, so that is a move like, up um, in the world. getting paid. Trust me, I so, know. So um, 
And I was really, really, really stressed one day about money because we're always behind on money. It's well, it's called whatever. owning a business. Yeah. Um, and then I was listening to the news, and I have a tendency to like to like yell at myself when I'm being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I did the you same know? thing. And, and it's like, like, quit whining, yes, someone else has it worse than yes. this. And then on the news, they were talking about the, the hurricane, and I was like, see? What are you crying about? Yeah, see? You These still got a house. These people fucking lost everything. Yeah. And so, that, and literally, I was like, well, I should do something. Yeah. Yeah, you should. So we did. Yeah, And it worked and out did. really well, and it turned into 17 fucking days on the road. Yeah, you were gone a while. I was like, hey, Bree, you back so yet? So brutal. He's, she's like, no, but it's almost my birthday, and he better be back. <laughs> And I did. You I did. You back. were very good about that. She was like, I'm going to kill him. Yeah. And I was like, he'll come back. I know well, we will. And our whole thing from the beginning was like, I don't want to do advertising because advertising to me, although it can bring people in, is not bringing them in for the right reasons. They're, they're coming in because they heard about a special or they heard it on the radio. Yeah. Whereas if you, if you do it the hard way... Which we had no choice but to do it the hard way. No, Anyways. not everybody has a marketing budget. It's not budget. like this like Trust great me. plan I had that I was gonna <laughs> do it the hard way. I had no choice. But it builds your like your your actual growth. Well your word of is mouth different. is like Yeah. Because you like the you organic hear from, growth. You hear from two or three of your friends that you trust yeah. before you ever even go try it. Yeah. So by the time you actually do come in, it's not I don't know, it's just different. It's and it, it keeps all the peaks and valleys down. Yeah, it's consistent. Yeah. Well, and it's genuine growth, like genuine organic growth yeah. that has come from word of mouth, yeah. you know. And, and I think, and something we've talked about kind of through the other podcasts too is like the partnerships, like you, like you guys. It's whether that's a partnership in giving back or it's a partnership like with us for the bread or it's a partnership with, uh, you know, barbecue sauce or these other things. And it's like if you can put yourself in the right position for yeah. these partnerships – you're gonna hit my market because I'm gonna tell all of them about you. Yep. You're, I'm, a, and you're gonna give me part of your market because they're, you're yeah. gonna know about my bread. And I don't know. It's weird. Like I don't. I never set out to network. I in fact do the opposite. Like because I don't. Like you are. Yeah. You, when have you ever seen me? No, he doesn't go out and network. It's usually me that's like, yeah. Hey, Brad. What's up, Brad? That's all I do is work. I don't like. I don't want to be. I don't want to be at bars doing stuff. Like I want to work. I want people to know that I I work and I'm serious. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like. And I don't want to put myself in any stupid positions. So like, but at the same time, business wise, I, I try to treat people the way I would like to be treated. Yeah. You know, Imagine so that. if I can use some, like somebody local, I'm going to, if I can be helpful to somebody local, I'm going to, because what if I need help? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what if I need somebody to do me a favor? Why would anybody do me a favor if I've never done anybody else? A favor? Yeah. It's funny. I talked about this on one of my podcasts before and it's, it's like, I talk about like social currency. Yeah. But it's, for me and you, uh, it comes from a, just a genuine place of like, I'm going to treat my neighbor as I would want to be treated, right? Yeah. But it also starts to become a part of social currency. And for me, it kind of goes into every aspect. It's, yeah. I want to use this product because I know someday I would like them to use my yeah. product. Or, or and it just happens to be good. And it's fucking <laughs> yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. Plus, if it wasn't, I wouldn't right. use yeah. it because yeah. I probably wouldn't be friends with that person if it wasn't good. I'd be True. like, we need to talk about your product. You're lying. But like it's not very good. <laughs> I love you, but it's bad. Yeah. But like even in your social life, right? It's like these people that like host events or these other things, and yet they get invited to an event and they don't show up. Yeah. It's like you you have to reciprocate. Like go to these people's events, give a shit. participate, and give a shit. You gotta actively participate. Yeah. Yeah. That's... This is involves participation. Like you can't just preach on your little soapbox and then expect the masses to come. It's you have to give some of yourself yep. without expecting anything in return. And then it will come back full cycle. And then it, no, but then it won't. And that's fine. I've resigned <laughs> myself to that. Yeah, sometimes and that's fine. it I don't definitely care. doesn't. I know, like, I got to do everything the hard way, like, two or three times. And then maybe I'll I do it I also like right. doing it the hard yeah. way. And that's fine. I'm used to it. But if we didn't do it the hard way, we probably wouldn't have any fun. If it was I don't easy, know. I'm pretty sure it's going to kill me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's going to give me a fucking heart attack. So <laughs> I hope not. I'm, I'm almost, I'm like, so I, I got. Maybe you should drink more. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I get like, I got to a point where the stress was giving me migraines again. And, and I was like, fuck. Yeah, I get in my head and I start fighting with myself. Like, 
dude, you've been doing this for almost five years now or whatever, and you know you're going to be fine tomorrow. Like, the things yeah. you're stressed about are going to be fine. Yeah. Like, you've, I've had to deal with way worse. So fucking let it go already. <laughs> So yeah. I did. I, I finally got yeah. to a point where I was no longer actively thinking about all of the stressful things. And, and I was like, yeah. got this shit beat. Yeah. And then I, I realized that, oh, all of the symptoms are still there. All of the anxiety, the mm -hmm. weight on my chest, the shortness of breath, the <laughs> yes. yawning all day long because you just can't get enough oxygen. Even though I wasn't actively stressing, all of that stuff was still oh, there. Oh, yeah, because it's like, still in the back of your mind. What the fuck? <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> So now I just don't, I just, I have to just not care. I have to pretend that I don't care. Yeah. But then when I need to act, I act. Yeah. But otherwise I'm in this false state of, I don't give a fuck. Well, and I think it's <laughs> partly like, like, we talked about this before is, is like, if there's not a problem to solve, then are you even it's growing? Awkward. It's super awkward. Yeah. I'm like, I get weird. I'm like, wait a minute. Everything's going it's really good right now. And I'm like. Something's wrong. Yeah, something's gonna something's break. Something's wrong. Where's the other shoe? The walk-in. Check the walk-in. Check, check something because something is not yeah. right. Yeah. But it's like, it's almost eerie. And for me, it's like in some effed up psychological loop, I'm like, no, I need a new problem to solve. What am I going to do if there's no problem to solve? And then you come to realize like, oh, well, business is doing well. I might be able to pay myself this year. Things are looking pretty good. Yeah. I will be able to live stress-free. And then you realize... Uh, the moment, the moment I think that like, I'm stress okay, free, I'm gonna be like, all right, let's open up another spot. You know, Jeez. let's start all of this nightmare over again. Yeah, I, do you think it's because we're just born this way? I don't know. I, I would or like to think, think like... that. I don't know. The majority of us feel like, the majority of people in general feel like outsiders. Even the people that we don't think would feel like outsiders, everybody feels like an outsider. Oh, I completely agree. Or. 90% of people and I think I don't know I I'm fine with that I, I like being an outsider because I don't know I guess it's what makes me want to um, push and excel and try and do anything yeah you know like I, I like building things I guess is really what it boils down to and I've challenged myself to build a business you know like yeah. that's so I'm passionate about the food but I'm more passionate about I guess it, to be honest, it really boils down to being able to say, ha ha, fuck you. <laughs> I did it the wrong way. I like that. I did it the wrong fucking way. And I still get it done. And I'm still here. Yeah. I mean, and I've had three heart surgeries and this eye doesn't work and nobody likes me, but I fucking did hey, it. Hey, I like you. And that's, and that's all that really yeah. matters. Well, so, Brie likes you too. Yeah. She well, she, yeah, but I think <laughs> Depends she on the day. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> no, I agree though, because like I come from very much like the. I wasn't always like, you know, well, I hate to compare it to high school, but I wasn't like somebody, right? I was like the little fucking nerdy, awkward kid, you know, flat chest, nerdy glasses, braces. I was flat too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And it was just like, and you, you kind of look at it and you're like, wait a minute though, fuck all of you, basically. It's like, oh yeah, look what I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I agree. And a part of it is that, and whether that's people I like grew up with, or that's family, or it's, X's or what have you it's also a matter of like fine you thought I couldn't do it yeah I'm about to show you what I can do yeah I literally had people tell me when I started talking about what I was doing like oh yeah man that's a good idea you should go work in a food truck for a year because uh, I, I didn't have any restaurant experience yeah I had done nothing even close to this yeah. um, aside from competition barbecue yeah and they were like what are you what are you doing you have no idea what working a food truck is like so do you <laughs> that's what I, I mean do. what am I supposed to do so I was like wait should I go spend that year working for somebody else or should I go spend that year that's, like working for myself that's exactly what I thought like oh yeah well I'll just do it myself and find out the hard way yeah at I least mean, I, I can only be mad at me it's true and I don't know too many people have great ideas and and the fear factor involved with actually pulling the trigger yeah it's huge but when when I wanted to move the family here, I wasn't, I wasn't afraid at all. I wasn't scared in the slightest. Yeah. Like everybody says that it took balls. It did not take balls. It logically made sense to me. And do you think I, part I of that scared. is like the like the factor, like your family factors? Like you knew that Probably. at the end would be better for your kids. Yeah. And maybe that was like 
I just hit a point where, like, the company that I worked for, I gave them everything that I possibly could, and there is no way that they would ever be able to pay me for what I was giving them. Yeah. It was a great job, great company, all of that. Yeah. But, I don't know. I just, the realization that I could still fail, they still hold my, my existence in their hands yeah. because I'm dependent on them for my check. Yeah. So, and fucking people live everywhere. Why am I choosing to stay in a place that I don't even like? Yeah. And work at a place that can't give me what I'm giving them. So that's why it wasn't scary because it totally made sense to me. The grass is certainly greener. Well, I just knew that, like, I could fail. Or at any- least the same level. I could fail anywhere. Why not at least be somewhere I want my kids to grow up? Yeah. And I can fail there just as easily as I can fail anywhere else. Yeah. And now it's like a whole nother level of I can only fail if I want to. Yeah. Really, the only thing that's going to kill my business, I mean, aside from some sort of catastrophe or, yeah. you know, something crazy, is me. If yeah. I decide to kill it, then it'll die. Yeah. If I don't, and I keep working on it, then it'll stay alive. Well, and it's, I mean, it is your baby. And I mean, yeah. like, we know Bree is there all the time. All the time. It is a, another one of your children. Yeah. And people are always like, oh, like, you're single to worry about. I'm like, ah, ah a few different things going on. And trust me, there are more commitment than you and your husband. Yep. Bree and I still are trying to get a date in for this year. No joke. <laughs> like, we're still like, well, we're not even halfway through the year. We'll get there. We'll go. Well, at some point. We got <laughs> we'll an anniversary hotel. We'll time, get, we'll, like, right? Or a birthday sometime. Totally. I think my birthday's next month. How is it working with your wife? Like, I mean, I know Bree is <laughs> fucking awesome, but like. It's. It's got to be. There's got to be days where it's like. There. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's just like working with anybody else, except then we got we got to go home with each other. Yeah. So if we, we, we worked on communication very early on in our relationship and like, you know, if I'm feeling insecure, I need to be able to tell her that. Yeah. And then she needs to be able to not get insulted and just reassure me and vice versa. Yeah. So we started working on that stuff really early on. We're still pretty good at communicating and pretty good at not losing our shit at each other. Yeah. Which I'm a button pusher. Like, fuck, I'm a button pusher. <laughs> Bree seems pretty patient with you, though. I mean, she like, is. when I've seen you oh, guys, yeah. like, interact, like, yeah. it's not, like, a big deal. <laughs> no, most of the time she's just fine. Every now and then I push it too far. Just joking. Yeah, every now and then I push it too far and, you know, I get in trouble. But she's so sweet, though. We, we, honestly, we have it pretty good. We do. We, we communicate well and... There's times when she's like, this was not my dream. Like, I'm, I'm hitting walls and yeah. fucking strung out on this shit, and this is not my dream, yeah. you know? So that part can be kind of hard, but she's in, so it's too late. Yeah, you're, you're, you're down the you're, rabbit hole. Like, you can't you're, leave. You're Even all, if you want to, you're done. <laughs> you are in the rabbit hole, so, and then you've got your own little mess. But what's nice about having Bree there is, like, you know, we get just as many compliments on our service as we do our food. Yeah. And that's 100% because of breathe. That, I have nothing to do with that. Yeah. I would, there's no way I could give the kind of service that Bree does. And she ensures that everybody else up, out there is doing the same. And she's there all the time and she gives a shit. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's nice to have that kind of yin and yang. It's like what Rochelle and I, right? I always say like, I'm the dark side of the yin and yang. She's the light side. Well, and now, now I'm out of there, so now it's James and Bree. Yeah. James is James runs barbecue for life. I still make all of the sausage and stuff, but but for the most part, he's running that. And so now Bree's just like the head ruler there. Yeah. Because nobody wants to fuck with her. <laughs> I, would, so. I wouldn't. So what are you doing now? Your time? So, so where are you hiding? Um, I am at Ironwood Social, yes. and we're running the kitchen over there, which is used to be shorties back in the day and all of that um they basically were redoing that place uh troy and shannon um and they decided that they didn't know anything about food so they came and asked me and i said yeah we would we would do it um but i was also like look it's a it's a really small kitchen 
in a place with a really big capacity. Yeah. I'm gonna set up a menu, and you gotta you gotta roll with me. If yeah. we change it, I'm setting it up so that on our busiest days, you can still we handle. can keep up without yeah. having unhappy customers. If we start changing it too much, that efficiency is out the fucking window. Yeah, then it's like if you're going gourmet yeah. in, the, in a type of place like that, then it's there's no way you're yeah. gonna be able to keep up. We, we have a smaller kitchen there than we do at Barbecue for Life. Oh my gosh. And we have yes. like this space, by the way, is like three times the size yeah. of the one. Yeah. Capacity of 275, capacity of 70. Yeah. And this place has a bigger kitchen. So we did our the menu is basically burgers and sausage. So. We grind all the tri-tip for the hamburgers. It's nothing but tri-tip. Um, we make all of the sausage. All oh my God, those stuff. burgers are insane. Yeah. Oh, and we have breakfast over there. So like, I, I make a breakfast sausage. We make our own bacon. So at the breakfast, you literally can get a breakfast that's made, like actually made. Yeah. We grind the sausage, season it. We cure and smoke the bacon. Oh my gosh. So it's just kind of cool because there's not many places you can get that. No, it's so, so good too. So the Ironwood is going pretty well. It's a slow start, slow, not as slow as I expected, which is great, Yeah. Um, but it's getting busier and busier and by the time we're in summer, I'm sure it's gonna be. It'll be yeah, nuts. It'll be a thorn in my side because I'll be <laughs> yes, it will. working all the time. You'll be back on schedule. There will be no- I was schedule. already, I was the last couple of months, six days a week, I was on the schedule. <laughs> Aww. You fuckers don't even pay me. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I see that Seriously. every day. I'm just like, oh wait, that's me. I'm yelling. I tell my guys in the kitchen that all the time. You're not <laughs> even paying me. Don't ask me to do nothing. <laughs> don't make me do anything. Yeah. That's your job. Yeah. All right. Well, I love our banter. Let me ask you just one more question. If somebody were to come to you wanting to start a business, whether that's a restaurant or anything, what is the advice that you would give them? Fucking do it. <laughs> don't talk about it. Don't, don't, well, don't try to refine your plan. Yeah. Don't spend too much time asking other people any fucking thing. Well, because they're usually trying to talk you out of it. So, <clears throat> here's a spot where a lot of people fuck up. They put a plan together, and then they make it, like, over the next hurdle, which is putting it into place and, and starting it. Then, you're never as busy as you think you're gonna be when you open a business. Like, never, right? Some people maybe, but you gotta figure you're not gonna be. Yeah. So it's always a shock to your system. Like sitting there doing nothing. you're like, I built it, why aren't they yeah. coming? Yeah, fill the dreams. It's yeah. not fucking fill the dreams. So, trust yourself. You put this plan together, you put it into action. When you open and you're not busy, I see people start to make changes. Like, yeah. big changes stay consistent and and now you you already know it was a good idea like just fucking trust yourself like yeah. that's the biggest thing people start like it's really easy to not trust yourself and think well fuck, maybe i was wrong all right i'm going to change this and change that and now it's just a train wreck like, yeah they, they screw themselves when over. it's like anybody that originally came in that liked it is now like what happened yeah and changed and, and, and even more than that it's psychologically once you start making those kind of changes, like you're, you've already given up on your first idea. Mm -hmm. And now you're setting a, a habit of, of giving up on, on ideas in pursuit of, you know, getting busier, which I just don't, it doesn't really work. So I'm like the exact opposite and I'm like, fucking get that change away from me or I will punch it. <laughs> you yeah, know? So I have to ease up on that a little bit, but I would, I would say be honest with yourself about what your skill sets are and what your capabilities are and how hard you're actually willing to work. Yeah. And I don't mean that as like, do you have a good work ethic or not? I mean, are you willing to beat yourself are against Are you willing this? to do what like, it really takes? To really like sacrifice your whole fucking existence to make this work. Because if you're not, then, then don't, don't do waste your money. Yeah. But if you're willing to fucking put yourself through hell, then fuck, go for it. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> I know, I, in my business partner, Michelle, I was like, dude, are you ready for this? Because this is not a joke. Like, I love you. We'll, we'll get through this, but you got to know that this is not a joke. I, I do kind of wish that I wasn't like a person that had to learn it the hard way because then I could just, I could have gone to school for a little while and then maybe 
been saving money. I still think those maybe, people learn the hard way anyway, though. They probably do. Because I think I tend to know, <laughs> from what I've experienced, is they get told all these things in the book, and then it's like this curveball, and they don't know how to hit it. Yeah. Because they weren't taught the curveball. They were yeah. taught X, Y, and Z, right? That's not supposed to work that way. Well. Well. <laughs> They're like, that's actually not how it happened in school. And I was like, yeah, well, this is real life. And <laughs> I want to be like, no, here's what I want to tell people that want to start their own business. Uh, spend like three fucking weeks grilling the city yeah. over every single detail of what you want to do. Because without a doubt, they will fucking trip you up and <laughs> screw you over <laughs> at almost every turn. Oh so, yeah, well with like what, licensing and... Just in general, that it's like, hey, we'd love you to start a business in our, in our city. That'd be great, yeah, go for it. Did you set all the booby traps? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, just go for it. We got your back, go ahead. We'd yeah. love to have you create jobs. And then you're like, what, you're $10,000 deep, yeah. and then it's like... And they, I'm t I mean, there's vastly more people that have started and not actually been able to open because of the city and county and all of the, the stuff in the way. And I'm not saying that that shit doesn't need to be there, but it's not set up very But it well. should be set with reasonable standards. How about, could we have one person in the city that works there that's there to like tell new people, here's all of the different things that you might run into? Yeah. Would that be so hard? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I agree with you though. I think that there's, well, I also think that maybe it's because we're so old school in Idaho and maybe it's because we haven't really come around, but our, like, some of our code and some of our laws, like, the, it's completely up to interpretation of whoever reads the code that day. Yeah. Which, might, it might favor you one day, but it's not going to favor you the next uh, day. One of the guys from the city made us put a hood over our dishwasher. Made us put a hood over our dishwasher. What? Yep. Made us do it. Why? <laughs> Does your dishwasher got, already be, like? He got pissed off because I had done some of the plumbing, and I'm not a contractor. Yeah. And he got mad about that, and I was like, "Dude, I used all the right stuff. I did it all the right way. Like, what's he got mad about that? So, so I didn't we, pay someone to do something I so did myself. Yeah. So then we had to put a hood over the dishwasher. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. and I think though, I I truly do think that like the city and the county, like. I mean, because of some stuff, you know, that we have had to deal with as well. It's like, you also have to remember that we're all human and we're here trying to start a small business. Yes. Can we, can you just make it easier? Yep. Like, it, we still can have regulation. Absolutely. We can still like, have things that are to code. But can you have a little bit of a soul about yep. it? It's hard not to feel like they're all on board for all of the big companies dropping massive amounts of money on buildings downtown. Yeah. And like, if you're a small guy, they're just like, yeah. Well, so like my delivery vehicle is a Prius because my truck was getting 13 miles of the gallon. And uh, they wrote me a ticket for being in a loading zone while making deliveries. I have like five restaurants on 8th Street that I deliver to. And they're like, well, you can't park there. And I'm like, what do you mean I can't park there? This is a delivery vehicle. And they're like, I was like, show me in the code where it says I can't. Yeah. Because I can't afford to buy a semi that I can't. And they're like, well, you could park in a parking garage. I was like, yeah, but have you carried my buckets of bread? Yeah. Do you know how heavy those things are? It's insane. No, and they don't care. They, yeah. I, I remember going into the city one time, and I took Bree with me, and as we were sitting there, all we wanted to do was take a piece of drywall down. Yeah. And as we were sitting there, I said, look at all these people that work here. Look at how fucking happy they are. They're all They've miserable. all got fucking retirements and insurance plans. Yeah. They're fucking, they fucking made it. And I said, just... Just keep that in mind. Like, look how happy they are. And what do they produce? They don't fucking produce anything. No. And then watch how we get treated. Yeah. So sure enough, they come through. No, you can't do that unless you hire an architect and then you have to pay this and this. The whole thing ended up costing us $7,000 to take down a piece of drywall that was covering an existing door. Oh my God. So, and like, this is the door in order to like expand business, basically. It was the door between Just to the connect, bar yeah. and the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Even though there's no more production done over there because yep. any food you take over there, you take back for garbage. Yep. It was, and there's, you can't, there's nothing you can do. $7,000? Yes. By the time we paid an architect to draw up the, the both spaces, and then there was a $5,000 fee from the city. For what? 
sewer usage because we were going to be using more sewer somehow. Even though you already had the lease to the bar mm -hmm. next door. But you can't fight them. No, There's what are you going to do, do about, about it? it? So you just say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Well, and but like any most like most, a lot of small businesses that would have just. Yeah. I mean, well, like, and the the reason that so without having the it's hard to you can't see the space so it's hard to explain. But if you before that doorway was open, if you were in the bar area serving, and somebody blocked the exit, there's nowhere for you to go. Yeah. And that's literally what happened to Bree. A guy came in, ordered a beer. When, when Bree went to give him his change, he lunged over the counter at the cash drawer, but he like slipped up. So he didn't like make. Yeah. So then he acted like he wasn't doing anything. Oh, wait, and then he, he backed up. And luckily, James came in, Wally, and so the dude took off running. But there was nowhere for Bree to go. And I, I was like, fuck it, I'm cutting this. I, I well, cut that the sounds off. really safe. Yeah. So. At any rate, it's just they're, I don't know, they, they kill more businesses than they, they help, that's for sure. Well, and, and you're not the only person I've ever met or personally I have experienced myself, but it's like, at what point do you remember that this is a small business, this is a startup, these are businesses we want to grow, this is supposedly what our community is asking for, supposedly what the state is asking for, and then you, you're just cock blocking us. And, and what trips me out, right not to be like super political or anything but like one side claims to be all about small businesses and all of that right and then but all of the policies that get tend to get put in place are all like built so that the little guys can't fucking fight through it yeah you know what i mean so that's that's going to be on both sides i'm not trying to pin it on anyone in general but like it's just super frustrating if you're if you're a little guy, you there's no help, there's no, like you're just. Well, you have no recourse. Yeah, you're just you're just most of most people are screwed, you know, unless you're super super stubborn. Yeah, well, I, and that's the thing. I and mean, who has the time to do that either? If you really are running a business, I don't have the time to go down and bother them every day. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. yeah. Enough bitching about the city. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, city. Sorry, city. No, please don't hate us. For that one. Yeah, but we yeah, still I would love tell, you. Just be a little nicer to small business. I would tell I would tell people to go for it because the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to fail, and like failing, whatever. I At mean, least you learn something. Yeah, and and that is true. Like the more the more you try, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the better you're going to be. So, but just sitting around and and like molding your idea into perfection, you will forever be molding. Yeah. You will not ever start it. You just gotta pull the trigger. Yep, you gotta fucking go for it. I told totally you. Be stupid agree. and just fucking go for it. Just go for it. So the worst thing can happen. Fail. <laughs> yeah, or you might succeed. Oh. Yeah, succeed. <laughs> succeed. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I thoroughly no enjoyed this. Thank you. And thank you again, Lost Grove and Argos Productions. If you have not been to Barbecue for Life, it is a barbecue and a vegan place, and yes. his knuckles are rad. Don't get me started on that ta tangent, because I will go off That's on Dickie's so. Barbecue. But uh, thank you all for joining us, and go check it out.